Well, good morning, and thank you so much for coming today uh, to celebrate a, a great man, a great friend, husband, father, grandfather, legislator, senator, representative, chairman, and so many other important titles, uh, our friend, Senator Fran Miller. We're going to begin today, uh, as we should, with a prayer. So I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Phil Schroeder to come up and offer a blessing to begin. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we gather this day to celebrate the work of one of your faithful servants. We give thanks for the leadership of Fran Miller in our state, and especially in this community where cross the crowded ways of life. We give thanks for his leadership in his family and his love for them. We give thanks for his willingness to reach across the aisle in ways that make us all better and stronger. For his personal faith and witness, O oh God, as a Sunday school co-president and usher wherever he is needed, we give you gracious thanks. For his ceaseless commitment to mental health for the people in this community, especially for students and faculty in our local schools through summit counseling, we give you thanks, O oh God. And although today a section of 285 is being named in his honor, we all know that Fran is more of an on-ramp, oh God. <laughs> he lives in a way that helps others to get connected and involved, to get on board. So for the way that he champions causes that are life-changing, we give you thanks, oh God. For the way Fran follows in the footsteps of the one who made rough places plain and helped people going through the valleys of life to have a second chance, we give you thanks. May others be called today to follow in his footsteps, to follow in this foot, the footsteps of this fearless, faithful leader, and that every time we traverse this patch of the perimeter, we might be reminded of our call to lead like Fran in both the turbulent and tranquil times. Oh God, keep us safe on all the roads that we are called to travel. In the name of the one who was and is and is to come and is calling now. Amen. If you'd all please rise. Please join me in pledge allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to ask the mayor of the city of Dunwoody, Mayor Lynn Deutsch, to come up and say a few words. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank you all for joining us. So I've known Fran for many, many decades at this point. I tried to remember when and I, when it began, and I decided I didn't want to think back that far to know that I was that old. But long before we were a city, Fran served not just first as a state representative, but as a state representative, county commissioner, and school board member all at the same time. He really was the go-to person for any problem anyone had in that what was then the community of Dunwoody. And so I want to know, can I share your number again? Can they call you instead of me? <laughs> Fran is a principled leader, and he has always been committed to his values. As someone who occasionally disagreed, and maybe still disagrees, with his positions, I always appreciate it that they came well thought out and measured. But what I think is most telling about Fran's character is that even when disagreeing, he isn't disagreeable. He is a truly model statesperson. And so it is my honor to present the following. So Fran, will you come up, please? So this is long overdue. This should have been done a long time ago. But I get to do it, so maybe it was meant to be. So whereas you have been an involved member of the Dunwoody community for over 40 years. And whereas you and Mary, your wife for more than 50 years, have three children, Lisa, Meredith, and Bill, who have joined us today, and seven grandchildren, you are a graduate of West Virginia Wesleyan College, and you've had such a distinguished career in the insurance industry. 
And whereas you were elected to the Georgia House of Representatives in 1998 and the Georgia State Senate in 2010, and during your legislative service, you served on a variety of legislative committees and subcommittees. And whereas you strive to make life better for your constituents and all Georgians by serving on committees that directly relate it to the quality of life, including education and youth, health and human services, higher education, and, met and MARTA. You are credited with expanding dual enrollment to allow students to move on when ready, and you also work tirelessly to improve K-12 public education funding. And whereas your philosophy as a legislator is to stay true to your values, work with others respectfully, and be deliberate in your actions at the Capitol, and you served your constituents well, your effectiveness as a legislator was recognized by many organizations, including Legislator of the Year from both the Georgia Chamber and the Georgia Senior Living Association, Policymaker of the Year from the Georgia Association for Career and Technical Education, the Advocacy Award from All About Developmental Disabilities, and a Garden, Guardian of Small Business Award from the National Federations of Independent Business and you have shared your time and talents with a variety of organizations, all of which have benefited immensely from your experience and wisdom. You have, um, you have served on a variety of local and regional boards, including the Georgia Partnership for Public Education, the Southern Regional Education Board, Dunwoody Homeowners Association, Sproul Arts Center, and the Summit Counseling Center. And you are active members at Dunwoody United Methodist Church, Governor Kemp recently appointed you, I think is very appropriate, to the State Board of Technical College System of Georgia. And so today we honor you as the portion of 285 that abuts Dunwoody is dedicated as your highway. We are grateful for your service and know that our community is fortunate to have you as a leader. Now, therefore I, Mayor of City of Dunwoody, Georgia, do hereby recognize and commend the senator for your selfless, selfless service to the city of Dunwoody. And I hereby proclaim August 2nd, 2021 is Senator Fran Millar Day. Thank you, Madam Mayor, that was wonderful. Uh, next up, I'd like Mr. Craig Lesser to please come up and uh, say a few words. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I'd like to begin this roast Oh, it's not. <laughs> Got to redo my whole thing here. So you heard from the mayor about so many of the things about, about Fran. Three children, seven grandchildren. Almost 40 years in the insurance business. 40 years. Um, now he's an independent consultant representing purchasing power making a lot of money, I guess, I don't know. 12 years state representative, eight years as a state senator, representing North DeKalb, portions of Fulton, portion of Gwinnett. You know, he helped create the city we're in today. He helped create Peachtree Corners. He helped create Brookhaven. But equally, if not more important, I always thought of him when I was Commissioner of Economic Development as the go-to person in this state on education. You wanted to know what was going on in the world of education in this state or what needed to be going on, you went to see Fran Miller. He passed legislation to help kids with autism, numerous education bills, charter schools, career pathways, dual enrollment, needs-based aid, tax protection, freezing home values for cities and county taxes until the home is sold. As the mayor said, he served on commissions and task forces, foster care, literacy, funding, recent appointment to the board, as the mayor mentioned, of Technical College System of Georgia. And I was trying to think, how did all this happen? Mary, bless you. <laughs> Because as I understand it, many years ago she just said, Stan, I mean, Fran, get the hell out of the house. <laughs> and he did, and it ended up being great service to our community and to our state. 
Mary, thank you. So who is friend Miller, Millar, Miller? You know, he's an interesting contrast. If you didn't know Fran, before you met Fran, is that a male or a female? Mm -hmm. And is it Miller or Millar? Millar. That's my surname. <laughs> Tell that to 90% of the people. Because <laughs> they still think it's Miller. And I do too. With all due respect. But you know, if you're fortunate, as we all are, to know Fran, you know there's nothing confusing about him. Nothing. Straight, direct, to the point, honest, and true to his word. And when I say true to his word, having worked with many, and I say this with all due respect to the elected officials here, when you ask Stan his opinion, you got his opinion. And if he said he was for something, he was for it. He didn't change his mind based on the whims of the day. He was true to his word and is true to his word every day, which is a pretty high mark for all of us, whether we're elected or not. Opinionated? Hell yeah. He wouldn't be Fran Miller if he wasn't. But one hell of a good guy who despite serving on all of these and being pulled in a million different directions was always Fran Miller. Always available. Always accessible. Right, Mary? always accessible to his constituents. And if you didn't know where to reach him, Los Rancheros, <laughs> just go on over there and you'll catch Fran at some point. So it's most fitting, I think, to name a portion of this highway after representative and for representative and Senator Fran Miller, citizen Fran Miller. Friend Miller, friend, and a member to signify a stretch on Interstate 285 at the intersection of Peachtree Road. It'll be an intersection when the construction is done, hopefully in our lifetime, yes, <laughs> that we'll see cars and trucks moving swiftly clear direction, 24 hours a day. Just like Fran Miller, clear and direct. So Fran Miller, congratulations my friend. Recognition of a life of service to our commitment to our state, to our community, and to all of the people here and so many, so many thousands of people who are not here. But on their behalf, thank you for being Fran Miller. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Uh, next up, I'd like to have the Senate President Pro Tem of the Georgia State Senate, Senator Butch Miller, come up and offer some words. Thank you very much, Senator Albers. It's truly an honor to be here with you today and with the entire Miller family. <laughs> you know, we've had a few confusion, uh, moments of confusion over the year, whether it was Miller or Millar. And one in particular happened in my hometown where Fran was up there on an educational um, uh, uh, summit and he made everybody in town mad. And they said, oh no, that's Butch Miller. <laughs> because they were referring to him as Senator Miller. <laughs> I was getting all those hate mail. I said, Fran, you gotta help me out. <laughs> and he did. 
And he did. And the experiences that I've had with this gentleman have been unbelievably rewarding and beneficial for me personally, for our state senate as a body, and for the state of Georgia. And as uh, Mr. Lesser pointed out, that Fran doesn't mind being direct. I was the governor's floor leader. And the last thing the governor tells you when you take a bill in the committee is, don't let anybody amend my bill. What did Fran Miller do? He amended the governor's bill. <laughs> but it worked out well. And uh, the mayor was kind enough to uh, speak of Fran's many accomplishments and awards. But most of that, I mean, no disrespect to anyone because I have the same list, so to speak. Most of that you can find out on Google. But what you can't find out on Google is the depth of character, the commitment to his fellow man, the love he has for Mary and for his children and for his grandchildren, the keen intellect, the impeccable integrity, and the countless lives that Fran Miller has affected in such a positive way. I'm grateful for you. My colleagues, Senator Kalsert, Senator Kirkpatrick, and Senator Beach, if y'all would come and join me, please. We're going to uh, uh, ask a member of the governor's staff to come up, Sebastian Barron, who's going to do a quick accommodation for the governor. And while he's speaking, I'd also like to ask any former or current elected officials who would like to come up here as well before we read the full resolution. But Sebastian, we turn it over to you on behalf of Governor Brian Kemp. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real honor and pleasure to be here to recognize Senator Miller for all his service and life work. And also, on behalf of myself and all the Georgians that were impacted positively over the years by all the legislation you spearheaded, thank you on behalf of them. The Honorable Brian Miller served the state of Georgia for 20 years as a member of the General Assembly, first in the House of Representatives from 1998 to 2010, then as state senator from 2010 to 2018. Senator Miller worked across the aisle throughout his career to craft legislation that improved the lives of everyday Georgians and made Georgia the most pro-business state in America. Senator Miller was a leader in the legislature and served as a chairman of higher education, secretary of health and human services, and the rules committee. Senator Miller was recognized for his leadership and skills throughout his career, being named policymaker of the year by the Georgia Association of Careers and Technical Education, Georgia Chambers of Legislator of the Year, and being given the Guardian of Small Business Award by the National Federation of Independent Businesses. On behalf of the state of Georgia, I hereby commend Senator Fran Miller. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, before I read the resolution, I just want to uh, take a moment of personal privilege. Uh, Fran is, is more than uh, a person we're honoring today. He's a dear personal friend of mine. And this message is to all these wonderful people here, but specifically to his children and to his grandchildren. As much as you already think of the millions of people that your husband, your father, and your grandfather have helped, will never be able to measure. And there are bills and legislation, but there's so many other things that, that you won't even know. I remember 10 years ago when our unemployment system was broke. It was literally in debt up to our eyeballs. It was Fran's unique gift and understanding and intellectual knowledge that made a change to that, that made it whole. And we just went through a 102-year pandemic. Had that not been happened, this state would have been upside down. He literally saved millions and millions of people. The impact is extraordinary, and it's really an honor. And while you have many titles, Fran, chairman, senator, representative, and others, I know your most important titles are as husband 
and as his father, his grandfather. And let me tell you what, he dotes on you all, all of the time. And that is the measure of one heck of a man. So, thank you. As we stand here today with our colleagues, we're going to read this. And when we're done, Fran, I'm going to ask you and Mary to come up. And we're going to unveil what this looks like. We did not want to do this in the side of I-285 today. I hope you all understand. Call me crazy, but good decision. Thank you. All right, here's a resolution. Dedicate certain portions of the state highway system, whereas Senator Fran Miller has been recognized by the citizens of this state for his vital role he played in leadership and his deep personal commitment to the welfare and citizens of Georgia. And whereas he diligently and conscientiously devoted innumerable hours of his time, talents, and energy to the betterment of his community and state, evident by his dramatic and a superlative service as a member of the General Assembly for 20 years. And whereas during his distinguished tenure with the General Assembly, Senator Miller championed education, small business, government accountability, and so much more. And he served with honor and distinction with a vision and an unyielding commitment to representing the residents of his district and educating the youth of this state and set the standard for public service of which all of us are always trying to measure, Fran. And it's abundantly fitting that you get the proper recognition for these outstanding accomplishments and you were instrumental to creating the very city and city hall that we sit in right now. So now, therefore, be it resolved by the General Assembly of Georgia that a portion of Interstate 285 from Exit 30 to DeKalb County to the Fulton County line be honorably dedicated to Senator Fran Miller as Senator Fran Miller Highway. I'm so thankful for you, Fran, and at this time, from our legislative officials, I'd also like to invite up the Chief Engineer for the Department of Transportation, Mr. Paul Denard, to join us. If you'd come up, let us unveil this sign for Senator Fran Miller Highway. You get on one side there, Mary. Fran, come on the other. All right. Ready? All right, here we go, folks. There we go. Okay, at this time, please take a seat and let's hear from the man of the hour, uh, our friend, Senator Fran Miller. Well, that was quite a day. Um, you know, um, I guess first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Phil for the wonderful prayer. When we're in town, we get to hear him every Sunday and it's, it's really a pleasure. And, uh, particularly since I'm on, I'm on now too, I guess, I hope, at this point. Uh, I'd also certainly like to thank the mayor for very, being very kind, letting us use this facility. And uh, I've known her so many years. She was active so much in education earlier in her life when she was 16. Uh, but uh, also, Craig, uh, you know, you were very gracious. I was afraid you were going to tell the story after, uh, you know, I got this license plate recently after I lost uh, called Legislator Emeritus. And uh, so I'm out there and we go to lunch with Craig and I and Phil Jacobs, retired president of Bell South. We come out of the restaurant. Phil looks at the plate, doesn't miss a beat, looks at the first three letters, DGU, Democrats got you. I've never looked at the plate since. <laughs> okay, so that, that, the plate just sort of went by the board at that point in time. And then there's John Albers. You know, I, I can't tell you, in fact, words don't escape me often, but they do here. Um, he has been such a good friend to me, particularly the last three years. None of this would have happened without John Alberts, folks. And 11 days ago, he was in a hospital. Where's Will? With his son, Will, you might have read about in the paper, where he donated a kidney and saved his life. And they're here today. God is good. Miracles still happen every day, you know? And uh, the thing about this original resolution, not the one John read, 
which was most interesting to me, was when I looked through the saw the sponsors, my Senate colleagues over here, which I very much appreciate, but there were four names on there, and you could have knocked me over. Gloria Butler, Democratic Senate leader. Elena Parent, Democratic caucus chair. Nan Orock, Democratic secretary, and my favorite socialist. And Valencia Say, longtime Democratic leader, signed that bill. And these ladies have known me somewhere between 10 and 20 years. My strengths, my one or two weaknesses. <laughs> and for them to do that was so, so gratifying for me. But today, at this point, I'm just going to stop being about Fran. This is my chance to thank everybody in this room. Because almost everybody in this room has played a significant part in my life. Certainly, I've got people here today that I've known for 40 years from Redfield. When I say your name, we wave your hand. McManamy's over here. The Anderson's over here, for example. People I've known all these years. And to me, you know, it's the people you meet along this journey that made it all interesting. Nobody's going to remember the bills. And they're going to see this sign and say, who was she? Okay. <laughs> okay. And, but it really is, as you, as you go along here, it's so, so important. You know, 23 years ago, in August, it was my first election, we were in a runoff. And I was out knocking on doors in August, okay? Mary and the late Wendy Wingate, where's Bev Wingate? The lady that never ages back there. <laughs> Such good friends, her and Wendy, over the years, been through, through thick and thin. They're out there pounding those wooden stakes in the old days, where you had the staple to sign on. Now, I won that election, 110 votes, but who's counting? And uh, this odyssey began, okay? And I've been very blessed over the years. Uh, my Senate colleagues that are here, Deborah Silcox from the House was here. I saw Deborah here as well. Um, you know, uh, the people at the local level, you know, I got involved with the Dunwoody homeowners early on, the Bill Robinsons, the, oh God, Bob, you know. Help me out, Terry, Bob. Lunston, Bob Lunston. You know, I mean, just, you know, Joyce Amacher, legends of this community, where I got involved way back when, and uh, made such a difference to me uh, over the years and the impact on my life. When I got involved in the legislature, I was able to be involved in other outside organizations, like the Tysinger Breakfast Forum, which Stan Baum is here, and, uh, and also Bob Dallas, who moderates it now at this point in time, a nonpartisan group on Saturdays. Southern Regional Education Board. You heard about, on the Southern Regional Education Board, that all these education bills I did. Where's Gene Bottoms? Gene and Helen Bottoms came down here today. Gene Bottoms, he wrote all those bills. He did all the work. I was just the mouthpiece. What a surprise. Uh, but he wrote those bills on dual enrollment and those, and those bills for career pathways. It made a difference in all these people's lives. You know. uh, locally, you know, I think about some people that made such a difference here. Can't miss him. The real father of the city of Dunwoody. Dan Weber in the back of the room, the tallest guy here in the room. I still think Weberville had a nice ring to it, but we didn't use that particular thing. But he's the reason we're sitting in this building today. It was his inspiration. And I got to work with some wonderful public figures over the years. True public servants. Bob Bell, his wife is here today. Okay. Jim Tysinger, Johnny Isaacson. And you know you're really famous, whether you're Tiger, I know you by your first name, or Beyonce, they know you by your first name. And we got somebody in DeKalb we all know her by her first name, the Queen, Liana. Liana Levitan, right here. Former CEO of Democrat. The state senator. But you know, when you do things like this, your family pays a price for it, particularly if you're a little bit outspoken. A little bit outspoken. Um, I really appreciate, you know, all three of our children are here and the grandchildren are here, with the exception of Bill's aren't because they're under a protocol back in Alabama. Bill came all the way from Auburn. He was the smart one. He left, he left Atlanta when I got elected, I think, and never came back. He, Bill was the smart one. Then we have Lisa, okay, Mary Jr., the PTA president, et cetera. Many of you know I'm on Facebook, which, by the way, Mary has never looked at my Facebook page, just for the record, and she's never looked at it. And um, Lisa, sometimes I'll still get a text in the morning on a local issue. Dad, don't comment. Don't say anything. <laughs> and in the old days, I think Meredith used to call her mother periodically. It's okay. You can read the paper today. Dad didn't say anything. Okay? Okay? But again, you can't do things like this unless you've got people working behind you and helping you, okay? 
Dan Benson's here today with his wife Sue from South Carolina. Dan and Frank Elliott, where's Frank? In the back of the room. They did all the work for me for at least 10 to 15 years in the insurance business. And Renee Loft, who was with me for 25 years, Phil, would you put her in the prayer for Sunday? 25 years with Fran, Renee Loft, okay? <laughs> and I remember when uh, I lost the election and uh, uh, about maybe a week after me barking at Mary about this, that, and the other, she finally turned to me and said, I'm not Donna. Donna Neely, who is my administrative assistant down at the Capitol for eight years, okay? It's amazing. If you surround yourself with the right people, how you can be effective. It really, really is something to behold. And then other people behind the scenes. Fran Fuchs in the back with Kenny Harris back there. They did those stupid campaign disclosures for 20 years. <laughs> Kept me out of jail. It was wonderful. I mean, I can't say enough for them and the Piedmont Bank people, all of those folks over there. So, you know, and they're just the local people here in general. The mayor over here, Danny, and Jim back here in the back. And Tinkerbell, Pam Talmadge, who's moved to Woodstock, and Stacy, who I've known for years. You know, everybody plays a part in here. And you all make a difference. And then there's the media. Then we're going to forget the media. For some reason, they like to call me sometimes. And the AJC, well, I guess the Huffington Post was the only one that intentionally ever misquoted me. But the AJC was fair to me. Whether it was Bookman, Jay Bookman, or Maureen Downey, or Greg Bluestein, or, you know, Mark Nisi, they were all fair to me. I do remember this the first election. You know, they used to interview candidates. Do you remember? They interviewed, and they, and they said, she'll do a good job. She'll do a good job after they interviewed me. Okay? That made me feel good. Okay? In person. I didn't use the falsetto. The, in person, they interviewed me. Okay? And of course, many of you know when I got elected, I started writing articles in the crier about politics. Because I thought it was important that people be informed. Some people think our nation's gotten a little ignorant about some things. And I thought it was important to let people know what was going on. In a fairly non-biased, I mean, I had my, I had my moments, but fairly non-biased manner. And Kathy Cobbs, Kathy, where are you? Kathy was kind enough to always correct all my grammar. And, you know, and Terry Nall probably corrected it too, now that I think about it. He'd probably call me and tell me, Fran, you didn't say that right. <laughs> and then I get to one of my favorite people. Dick Williams. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, Dick Williams, Dan, I don't think we'd have had a city of Dunwoody without Dick Williams. I really don't, with the Crowder newspaper. And those letters to the editor. And he and his late wife, Rebecca, the Cherry Blossom Festival ladies, city council person, mayor of Brookhaven. But Dick, all, the, all of you politicos that watch the Georgia gang, it's always going to be Dick Williams with the bow tie and the wit. That's, that's the Georgia gang. Okay, and what a difference as a friend that he has made in my life. I can't say enough nice things. <laughs> and we can't quite get over that hurdle with the Braves winning every other day. He came up with a suggestion, take day two off, come back on day three, maybe we can start winning again since we can't seem to do it any other way, but I don't know. And then I come to Mary. Um, you know, it's, uh, Rosalind and Jimmy Carter were just married for 75 years. If you read the articles, wonderful spread on. And one of the things that was interesting in the article, Rosalind used a word that I used to like the word about our, our marriage. It's been an adventure. I said it right? An adventure, okay. From West Virginia to San Francisco to Georgia, okay, to Dunwoody, to Redfield to Brook Farm, from a house at Lake Lanier to a house in Cashers, North Carolina. From Austin Elementary, Petrie Middle School, Dunwoody High School, love it in between, the Lovett School, excuse me, the Lovett School, uh, Westland. But it's been a real adventure. And at this stage in my life, I guess the best thing I can say is that I am so fortunate and so blessed to still be married to my best friend. And that's pretty cool. A lot of people can't say, Robert, I'm sorry, I forgot to say hi to you in the back from the city council from the beginning. Uh, it's hard to see with all the masks and stuff. I'm going to close right there pretty much, but one final comment. Uh, if I had to, uh, you know, somebody recently told Mary and I, they quoted from Ecclesiastes, this is for Phil, uh, there is a season for everything, and my time has passed as an elected public official. But if I could remember for anything, it would be this. Fran Miller wasn't always right, 
but you always knew where he stood. Thank you all very much, and God bless. I could ask our friends at the DOT to bring some of those other signs over to uh, share with the family. Thank you all so much for coming today. Uh, and as Fran said, he might not be in elected office, but believe me, we call on him all of the time, and he is still making good things happen in the state of Georgia. Thank you for coming, and have a blessed day.